Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and I suppose uh, another plug side chat. I don't know, maybe I'll label it that, maybe I won't, but uh, no whiteboards this time, but I did want to follow up on my LMR battery video, the one that I recently discussed, GM's upcoming LMR battery technology. And part of the reason I wanted to do that is I missed Ford. Now, Ford actually released even fewer details than GM did, though they announced their LMR battery technology before uh, GM did, I think a month before. It wasn't really on my radar. Uh, I think they posted something on LinkedIn was really the only place that they actually posted it on. And, and the truth is, I don't really follow the new battery trends news all that much. Uh, part of that is that we've just seen so many different companies claiming new battery technology that's going to do this or do that or, you know, it's a thousand mile battery. Just FYI, there's no such thing as a thousand mile battery. There might be an EV that can do a thousand miles with a given battery, uh, but that's going to vary based on the EV efficiency, the battery size, right? So uh, all of these technologies or even the 10 minute battery, oh, I can charge from 5% to 100% in five minutes or 10 minutes. Well, people forget that we've already had batteries probably for 10, 15 years now that could charge from 5% to 90 or 95% or 100% even in like five to 10 minutes. The problem is they either had terrible uh, coulombic efficiency, right, um, or poor voltage uh, ranges or whatnot. Uh, a, a battery that comes to mind is LTO, the lithium titanate uh, batteries. They have like a 10C charging speed, right? So you're literally talking about charging from, you know, empty to full in like under 10 minutes, right? Five to 10 minutes. But really poor energy density just didn't work out the way you would want them to for an electric vehicle. So all of these magic bullet batteries, I don't really follow them too closely. Uh, but Ford, I kind of missed on that one and I should have been paying more attention. Now with this LMR, the lithium manganese rich battery technology between Ford and the, on one side and then GM uh, LG Energy on the other side. Um, I think more than anything else, it's just a bad coincidence in naming conventions. And in fact, I'm actually surprised that neither Ford nor GM had already trademarked the term. Um, because I think from a consumer uh, perspective, this is really set up to confuse a lot of people. Now, I'm going to make some assumptions here uh, in this video, but I call them educated assumptions uh, based on what little information we have because we really are waiting on some additional information. And it seems like, and I, I've seen a few other videos since I posted mine of people looking at this and they're basically kind of implying or thinking or assuming that these two technologies are the same. Uh, and based on what I've seen, my assumption is they are very fundamentally different batteries. Um, not just like, oh, this one has a scooch more cobalt or this one has a little less nickel. No, 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 no. The, these are fundamentally different uh, batteries. So based on that post on LinkedIn, I think it was Charles Poon, he compared it in direct for Ford's LMR, he compared it almost in direct opposition to nickel batteries, which implies to me that they aren't basing it on the nickel cathode, which GM is. And this is where I also saw someone saying that whatever GM was developing, well, China is way ahead of them and they've already tested it out. I don't think so. Um, GM was at the forefront in terms of the nickel cathode batteries and battery testing, and they have been for the better part of two decades now. 
um, where China hasn't really uh, delved into nickel as much. Uh, their focus has really been, and all of their innovations have really been around the iron-based batteries, right? The LFP batteries. And with Ford working so closely with the different Chinese battery manufacturers, my guess is that Ford is working with an LFP moving it into LFMP. Now, CATL, I believe it was, was the one that stated that they already had working LFMP batteries. So maybe Ford isn't really all that ahead anyway. As I recall, I seem to remember that there was an attempt to release them. Basically, it seemed almost more like a LFP with manganese doped battery. And they came in the old nylon uh, battery cells similar to LFP. And there was a very big issue with those batteries degrading very quickly, losing their voltage and losing their capacity. Voltage fade and... Uh, basically over the life of the battery, right, the, the voltage range drops, um, which, as I mentioned in my previous video, will have an issue in terms of power curves, charging curves, overall energy. Um, and this was something that was known, right, I think about LFMP, the lithium ferrous man manganese phosphate batteries. So what Ford is claiming then is that they actually fixed that voltage attenuation or that voltage fade within the you know the LFMP battery chemistry and if they did that means that they possibly even leapfrogged uh, the Chinese battery industry uh, again like I said CATL was supposed to be releasing uh, some functioning LFMP batteries I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe Ford did actually fix those issues or maybe they were working underneath the radar with CATL and are just sort of avoiding any sort of scrutiny by saying, yeah, we partnered with CATL um, and, and they helped us develop this technology and we're bringing it to market, right? Whatever, you know, whatever the, the case may be given the, the political um, environment. But... If they did, then great, because LFMP actually does provide some great advantages. And if they fixed that voltage fade problem, then what it's promising is essentially LFP prices with NMC uh, energy densities is, is really what, what you're offering at that point. No cobalt, but still that 200 and 50 to 300 watt hours per kilogram stepping off point in terms of um, energy density. And then of course, power density, basically very similar to any of these nickel based batteries. Like I'd mentioned in the other video, proper electrode thickness, um, proper thermal management, and you're looking at batteries that shouldn't have an issue charging at 2C, 3C, 4C, 5C, right? So these, could be fast charging batteries, high power batteries. You need fewer cells to reach a, a particular uh, pack voltage. So LFMP, great. But what I would caution against is assuming that this is the same chemistry that GM and LG Energy Solutions is going to be bringing to market in, uh, I think, 2028 is when they said they're going to start production on their lithium manganese rich batteries so i am moving forward with the assumption that the two batteries are fundamentally different in terms of their chemistry um, and if i had to make some assumptions based on what we know so far i would see, say that the cost is going to be less for ford's lmr um, but also, they're going to be similar in terms of energy density and power density, but also I would expect that maybe the, the GM LMR will actually have a longer um, cycle life. So we'll have to see. Like, I, 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 again, until we can actually see them and test them and, you know, Ford can actually produce them in volume, get them in vehicles, get them on the road where we can see how they behave. 
under pressure um, when they're charging, when they're discharging, when they're driving. Uh, and then the same goes for uh, GM LG Energy uh, getting their LMR batteries. The, the one thing that I would say is maybe the two of them can coordinate and say, hey, look, we're going to we're going to confuse the consumers. Let's sit down and talk about how we can name these batteries so that we know that we're not confusing the consumers. And when they see Ford LMR, they're not confusing it with GM LMR and except expecting the same sort of consumer experience. Maybe I'm getting too much into the weeds. Maybe this is, is just not something that consumers will care about. They're just going to care about the end result. Um, but for right now, I think the marketing and the industry, I think people are going to be confused by the fact that they're both using, using the same term to describe what I think appears to be two very different, fundamentally different battery chemistries. It's not, it's not just a, a tweak here or there. These are, these are very bit different batteries based on what I've seen. And like I said, I'm making some assumptions here, but they didn't give us a whole lot more to go on than that. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, are you looking forward to Ford's LMR batteries? Or are you looking forward to GM's LMR batteries? Do you think as consumers, we probably aren't going to get too much into the weeds and it's just ultimately going to come down to price and, and performance. Uh, I mean, I think that's the case, but again, we're throwing around the same term, so we'll have to see. Anyway, uh, as always, thank you for watching.